Morning, the start of another week. Yes, gang, it's Monday the 7th of August 2017. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, coming live from Bracknell in Royal Berkshire here at the Mirable Studios. You may already notice something different behind me. Have you noticed yet? We like to keep it changing. It does get very boring when it's the same old thing. The only same old thing here is me. I like to keep changing things. Do you notice that? Look at that. That's that's me and my nephew there. Uh, that's a bit old, that photograph, actually. It's got to be... Hmm, got to be 10 years old. That is, dare I say it, dare I tell you, Skegness Beach. Look at it. Oh, what what a desolate place that looks, doesn't it? <laughs> they even do ice creams ch uh, dipped in chocolate. Look at that. There we are. And I sh I've, sh I've put that up this morning because I was going to compare it with another photograph that my nephew, that's one of my nephews, Jimmy, that's the younger one. He's he's 20 now. Uh, my other nephew is, he's either 32 or 33. I think he's 33, the other nephew now. And he's got his own family. And my niece is 30. Anyway, uh, Jimmy, who's a big Chelsea football supporters fan. Oh, incidentally, Jimmy, someone, uh, Mark Cording, who comes along to the karaoke, is one... Um, who sings the generally the rock song? He does rock songs. You know Mark. You're, you're, you'd know Mark if you saw him. He's given me a Chelsea flag for you that he managed to get hold of yesterday, which is in the back of my car. So I'll bring that. I want to see you sometime in September. Okay. All right. So you've got a Chelsea flag coming all the way from Mark. Anyway, so yesterday he uploaded this fo photograph from from the English Football League or something like that who have been going around, I think, and taking pictures of people that have been to football matches and have now passed out. And there is a picture of my nephew on this site, on a coach, like, like passed out on the coach with what looks like, and I don't usually like to use these words first thing in the morning, what looks like a tampon up his nose. Now, I I immediately grabbed this picture yesterday and reposted it on his mother's wall, his sister's wall, his brother's wall, and my wall. I posted it everywhere. But I've gone this morning to re-download it, and it's gone. So he must have taken that down very quickly. <laughs> I shall have to contact his friends, George, and um, who are the other ones? Oh, Alex, and uh, see if they see if I can get another hold of that picture because I wanted you to compare that with that with that little innocent boy there, now a drunkard who supports Chelsea football manager. <laughs> so I will have a look for that, Jimmy. But you have got a flag coming, okay? I, I was going to wear one of my new shirts this morning, um, <clears throat> and I left it, and I left it, and I I started off. The countdown that you see happens before. It's a five-minute countdown. If, you, if you've never seen it before, as soon as I switch on, I, I do a five-minute countdown, which allows people to come in and, oh, it's five minutes to go, and you know, you know the sort of thing. And uh, I, I went to my cupboard after I'd started the countdown. And, of course, it's in a packet. And I thought, oh, if I start opening that now, it might have pens in it. You, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want me to be pricked live on air, do you? I mean, there's enough of those sort of films on the internet, as you well know. I don't want to be, I don't want needles in my arm and all up my back and chest while I'm chatting away to you. So I thought I'll leave that to another day. We'll hold that little bit of an excitement on to another day because I've got two new uh, Ted Baker shirts. But I'm going to have to open them soon because the ironing lady isn't available at the moment. She's got a bit of an illness um, in her family, not her, but in her family. But we think. Because uh, me and uh, uh, my friend and I, we have a, an ironing lady. And once the ironing builds up, we give it to her and she does it. And it's very cheap. It's about 10 quid for a great big bag of ironing. Yeah, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than Mrs. Patel, dry, Mrs. Patel's dry cleaning place down the road. I mean, she's nice and she can fix things. She can fix things. My mate took her some jeans the other day that he did. I, I don't know what was why he, want, why he wanted this to happen. But he said, could you make them in a, into a pair of shorts? And she has done. How brilliant is that? <clears throat> she can do anything, Mrs. Patel, down the road. I'm telling you now. Wonderful lady. And I'm wondering if my some of my jeans are now far too big. Of course, they're hanging off me. Well, no, well, they're not hanging off me. They won't even stay up. They, you pull them up and they're straight down on the ground again. 
I wonder if she can take those in. Could you take in, for example, a size 40 waist jeans to a size 36? Is, is it? Oh, oh, no, 30. What am I now? 34 to a size 34. Can you lose six, six or, or doesn't it work like that? Because if you take the waist in, everything else is going to be too big as well. Is it possible to do that? Perhaps one of you will tell me. One of you will know that. Can, can you? Could you take in a 40 waist jean to a 34? Or, do, or doesn't that quite work? I'm not a seamstress. I'm not a sewer. My nan used to do sewing. Oh, if, if, if us children needed anything sorted, then we just took it round to our nans. She could take up, she could take up trousers, sew socks up. Of course, you don't bother now, do you? Eh? Got a hole in a sock. I'll buy a new pair. No, we used to repair them, dear. I mean, I still would if I could sew them myself. Wasting all that money buying new socks all the time. <laughs> we got a Marks and Spencer's now. Mind you, that I told you about the service I got in there on Friday. I mean, the cafe was nice. I had something to eat. Uh, jacket potato, cup of tea, and baked beans on a... Uh, baked beans, uh, £6.75, which I thought was quite good. But then when I went to buy something, there were two people at the counter, and I stood there for 10 minutes. You know, they're completely oblivious to anyone standing in the queue. I meant to write them a letter about that. Might get a voucher. Might get a voucher for £10, dear. Yes. Let's say hello to some early people who are with us this morning. First message of the day goes to... Da, 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 Peter Hydes. Good morning, Peter. Welcome to another fun-packed Monday. Yes, uh, Diane Jab is there this morning. Good morning, Diane Jab, brother. Gustav says, morning, Diane. Oh, you'd know, Gustav. Can you take in, like, a size 40 waist jeans for 34? Is, is it possible to do that? Do let us know. Gustav says, morning, darling. How wonderful to see your beautiful round... Fa round? It's not round anymore, is it? Come on. Are you serious? It's not round anymore. My stomach's still a bit round. It takes a long time for it to go, doesn't it? Uh, how wonderful to see your beautiful round face beaming summer joy to the millions watching. Yes, here I am to spread a little bit of happiness and sparkle into your lonely, boring, sparkless lives. I know you're probably in one of those old flats where the central heating doesn't work, no hot water, you know, fleas in the carpet. Talking of fleas, I've got a story about fleas at the moment, and they're not the normal type of fleas that you're thinking about that are probably hiding away in your carpet. Especially those of you with dogs, not cats. Cats very clean. No fleas on cats, dear. No fleas on cats. I should be hearing... Um, <clears throat> Uh, from the vet this week, I think, actually. Uh, you may remember this time last week. It was a, a very sad from, sad day for me. I had to take my um, uh, my my lovely 18-year-old cat into the vet last week and uh, uh, she didn't come out again. But uh, I collect her ashes this week to take down to my mum's grave and put them on there. So hoping to hear from them this week. Uh, good morning to Shania. Morning, Shania. Hope you're well on the Isle of Wight. You've had a, a very busy weekend there, haven't you, my darling? You always seem to be doing something on the Isle of Wight. I mean, it's not like Bracknell, you know, Bracknell, I mean, we've got a shopping centre opening in about a month. I think that's the only thing to happen this year in Bracknell. You, on the Isle of Wight, there's always some sort of music festival or carnival. There's always seems to be something exciting happening on the Isle of Wight, doesn't there? Eh? Fascinating, fascinating. Good morning to Gustav uh, once again, who says, just one request. Can you pause the show for about 30 minutes? I'm watching Game of Thrones, and it's a really good bit. If you start again in 30 minutes, it will be finished. Thanks. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Start the show again just so you can finish Game of Thrones. It's outrageous. I thought Game of Thrones was on uh, Thrones, uh, fr not Thrones. Oh, that's dreadful. Oh, that, that was Jeremy Carl English then, weren't it? Can you imagine him talking to the, um, not contestants, what do you call them? To the, to the guests on the show. Although you wouldn't want them as guests, would you? The people on the Jeremy Kyle show. Can you just imagine them? And watch, what do you watch? I watch Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones with that one tooth in their mouth, which is black. And the tracksuit, the shiny tracksuit. <laughs> Do you think they really all wear tracksuits? Or does Jeremy Kyle give the tracksuits to them to wear, I wonder? Ghastly people, dear. We don't have anyone like that in Berkshire. Certainly not. Morning to Merlin. Morning, Chris. Can you, you can tailor jeans slightly, but the size change you're looking to do would mean you would. 
mean that they wouldn't hang on the waist properly. Yeah, I thought I, 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 that's what I thought, Merlin. I reckon you might get away with a couple of inches pulling that in, but to 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 pull in what is it? Oh, so it's um. 34, 35, 6, 7, 8, it's about nine and a half inches, I think that's correct. Uh, to pull it in about nine and a half inches, going from 40 to 34, would probably be no, nine and a half, it's nine, it's ten and a half, is it ten and a half? I don't know, I'm not very good, I've got unclassified for maths, yes, unclassified. Um, I think that would probably be a little bit too much, wouldn't it? That would, I don't think that would work, would it? Thank you, uh, uh, Merlin. Perhaps I could send them up to you. Are you a seamstress, Merlin? Can you do a little bit of sewing? Knitting? Do you sit there knitting while you're watching BBC News 24? Or anything else on the telly? Huh? <laughs> oh, dear. Morning to Mark Kempner. Morning, Mark. Hope you're well today. Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well. You often pop in the pub now. Is it you who pops in the pub now? I think it is. Anyway, yeah. Now, fleas, let me just tell you, fleas, look at this. <clears throat> now, when you go to Australia, they often tell you, don't go in the water at certain times of the year, uh, which is a, like a long period. Yeah, we're not talking a couple of weeks here and a couple of weeks there. Months. Don't go in the sea for months on end without protection. Uh, like, you know, all the... What do they call that? You know, like the, sea, the suits that they wear. Because the jellyfish can get you. They don't eat you, but they sting. And when I say they sting, the sting can and does kill people. It's very, very deadly. Box jellyfish. Well, it's not those you've got to just worry about now. On the BBC News website this morning, I was struggling for things to read out to you this morning, funnily enough. Uh, all the papers, they've all got this whole, whole Diana thing in there at the moment. And quite honestly, I think we should just leave, let sleeping dogs lie, you know? I mean, they just, they, people keep going back to the past all the time now. Do you remember, do you know? They do, they, they constantly digging up the past for some reason. I wish they'd leave Diana alone. <clears throat> you know, it's done. We will never, ever know what actually happened. You will know, it's all very well, you know, he says that, she says that, she says that, he says that. We've got our only opinions of what happened. It might just have been a, 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 an everyday accident or she might have been killed by someone. We don't know. We're never going to know. I, I don't see what good it does to keep bringing up the past all the time. So I've been struggling. And, it's, and the papers are all full of that this morning and what uh, uh, some Channel 4 programme, which I didn't see, to be honest. Uh, so I've been struggling a bit, looking for stuff to read out. And then right at the last moment, while the countdown was running, I came across this story. An Australian teenager is recovering in hospital after being bitten by multiple mite-sized critters. And there's a picture of this um, uh, bloke laying on a hospital bed, only a young lad, about, about 23 years old perhaps, and his feet and the bottom part of his legs are covered in blood. Oh, this bloke, here he is, he's 16 years old, found his feet and ankles covered in blood after soaking his legs in Melbourne's Brighton Beach on Saturday evening. Oh, is it anything like our beach in Brighton? Oh, that's an awful place, Brighton. Oh, you walk around there at night. It's not nice. Not nice walking around Brighton at night. Go down the road a bit to Hove. It's nice there. Nice and quiet. Nice for the older generation like myself, I think. Um... Uh, this bloke said his son arrived home with what looked like a war injury and that his legs would not stop bleeding. The family are seeking expert opinion to identify the flesh-eating bugs. Oh, flesh-eating bugs. You're not safe to go anywhere, are you? Marine biologists said they are likely to have been sea fleas. You ever heard of those? <clears throat> I've never, ever heard of such things. Sea fleas, which are tiny, scavenging marine animals. So this boy, uh, after a tiring football game on Saturday evening, the 16-year-old decided to soak his legs so that it could uh, in the cold bay near his home. He stood still, waist-deep in dark, cold water for about half an hour and didn't feel a thing, but he'd returned home bleeding profusely. Didn't feel anything, you see. I mean, I could be an eaten alive now and I wouldn't even know. I can't feel a thing from the inside out. It looked like a war injury, like a grenade attack. We got him in the shower. This is his dad. 
But uh, as as we did that, the blood just kept reappearing. It wasn't clothing at all. It was it wasn't clotting at all. It was just bleeding. Two local hospitals couldn't identify uh, what was going on. The Melbourne father decided to investigate and went back to the beach. I collected these strange creatures from the same spot last night by trapping them in a net and standing in the water myself. We've got thousands of these little things, and they've been sent to experts. Sea fleas, you see. Don't walk around in the water in Australia. I don't know how they do it all on neighbours and home and away. They never seem to get stung or anything there. But they've got these, like, black swimsuit things, you know, that cover you from head to toe. I mean, you've got to be the right shape to wear one of those, haven't you, eh? God's sake. You'd see these fat middle-aged blokes where put, trying to squeeze into one of those, wouldn't you? Oh, it would look awful. Like a sack of old potatoes or something like that, yes. Um, let's have a look there. Ah, thank you, Gustav, who says the problem with adjusting the waist is that they would then be really baggy, I thought so, around the bum and legs, because you would be thinner there as well. So they would be like a sack. The whole thing would have to be unpicked and recut. It's not worth doing, is it, Gustav? Gustav had a very interesting outfit on on Friday night, didn't you, sir? It was like, like I can only describe it as oversized dungarees. <laughs> which he paid £700 for. God's sake, man. What are you wearing tonight? Are you coming tonight? What what new outfit are you wearing tonight? Gustav is, is, is the head of fashion in Central Station, uh, the bar I work at uh, three times a week in North London. He comes, he's the only fashionable person in there. And he wears these outfits that, to me... <clears throat> to me, an ordinary Sports Direct type person, to me, look very, very strange. But apparently are the epitome of the fashion world. So you carry on wearing those good stuff and we will carry on laughing, lovey. OK, <laughs> no, nothing wrong with a shirt and a pair of jeans, dear. <laughs> Morning to John Aitken, who says, Morning, had a fantastic time in Bali. Was sorry to hear about your cat. Thank you very much, John. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a whole week ago now. Whole week. It was It was very quick. It was very quick um, going to the vet. I, 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 rung up at, uh, I rung up the vet at five to nine in the morning. Um, and she said, can you get in now? I said, yes. I was there at 9.15 and by 9.30, she's gone to heaven. You know, very, very quick indeed. I was very upset last week. I didn't do a shows for a few few um, uh, for a few days, uh, and I'm not the only one. We we seem to have a, a lot of cats dying at the moment. Um, my friend Sean Riches, <clears throat> who uh, had a cat. I, I, I'm so sorry. I can't remember the name of him now. Uh, but he looked his, uh, his cat actually looked very similar to mine. Same sort of colours. Uh, he lost his uh, last last week as well. And now I find out that Steve, who comes along to the karaoke sometimes, uh, he had to have two of his um, go to sleep last week as well. So uh, not a good week for cats, really. You know, last week, uh, just one of those things, I think. Good morning to uh, Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. I hope you had a good time, Ray. <laughs> I know you've been playing your luke ukulele at all sorts of shows uh, at the weekend, haven't you? Good, good, good. Yesterday, I've been... Finding that Sundays are very, very tiring. And I, 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 I put it down to the fact that I set my alarm for 7.30 on a Sunday morning. Usually I'll get up about half past eight. Sundays it's 7.30. And the reason I get is for 7.30 for is because I then cycle down to the church and I go to church for nine o'clock in Wokingham. But I, I've been finding I come home and then I have a cup of tea and then I'm really tired. I mean, fatigued tired. Really, really tired, and I can't do anything. And I find myself going back to bed at one o'clock in the afternoon, and I hate doing anything like that. So yesterday, I didn't set the alarm. I thought, well, let's see what time I wake up. And it was half past eight, by which time it's too late for me to, because uh, I haven't had breakfast or a cup of tea or anything. I can't leave the house without a cup of tea. Oh, my God. Never, ever talk to me before my cup of tea and about 45 minutes has passed since I opened my eyes. I don't want to know. I do not want to know. The phone rings sometimes. Oh, hello. Oh, you'll have to call back. Oh, it's important. But off. Goodbye. <laughs> Are you the same? Oh, they want to talk to you at that time of the morning. Anyway, so I didn't have time to do that. <clears throat> so I went to my another church, which is in Sunningdale. That's not really a bike journey. That's that's a car journey. 
It's a little, it's, it's about 20 minutes in the car. It's not far. Um, for 10 o'clock, for the 10 o'clock mass. And I'm sitting there and, and the bell goes and there's no music. And I thought, oh, and there was no hymns. No, no singing, no organ, nothing. I was so disappointed. It's a lovely church. I must take some photographs and show you. And it was all over and done with him, 45 minutes. When there's no singing, it's, it, it, it's about 45 minutes less. But there was no singing, nothing. And um, I said to the person next to me, I thought, I thought it was a sung mass this morning. Oh, no, they're all on holiday. What do you mean on a holiday? What, the whole choir? I think there's only about three old bags in that choir. <laughs> but it does sound nice. And they play the organ quite loud in it. I've been there twice before. Uh, I was so disappointed there was no singing or anything. And I left feeling quite deflated, actually. We do like a bit of a sing-song on, on a Sunday morning. From there, I went to the Waitrose in Sunningdale, which is much smaller uh, than, than the one in Bracknell. So that was nice. Um, came back, uh, done my dinner. I did my chilli bean thing, my chilli bean thing. And uh, I watched the rest of The Crown. I finished watching The Crown, that TV series I told you about on Netflix, which is excellent. Really good. And I'm very pleased. I looked it up straight away. Oh, is there another series? And there isn't available another series yet. But there's a new one coming and they think it will be out in November. It's being filmed at the moment. So really excellent. And I know I've gone on and on about this over the last few weeks. Uh, but The Crown is an excellent series on Netflix. It's probably, I would say it's worth paying the Netflix fee just to watch this TV series, The Crown. <clears throat> so series one is the whole thing's up there and uh, series two will happen in November. All right. So I've looked that up for you. Um, let's have a look. Oh, my new filter arrived for my my Vax carpet cleaner. Here it is. I told you it was a bit like an envelope. Look, could you, you could use it as a nose thing. I'm going to go on the back of my chin like that. Oh, look, 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 I could join. I could join that other religion now, can't I? <laughs> what do you reckon? That, that's good, that is. Are you scared? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, look. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> I like it. Do you like this? Does that suit me? A little bit of a beard going on there? <laughs> so that arrived yesterday. I was surprised, funnily enough, when Amazon deliver stuff on a Sunday, don't they? I didn't ask for it on a Sunday. I, I don't pay extra. I haven't got an Amazon Prime. £75 a year, dear. You know, for a few extra TV programmes and next day delivery. No, I ordered this, um, when was it? I like the smell of new stuff, don't you? Oh, I do like the smell of new stuff. And it's, it's, all it is is a bit of plastic. And that, that fits over the, see, the, the dirty water gets sucked into this thing and it goes through this and into the, into the little tank. I think that's how it works anyway, or, or it might be. Oh, no, no, I think that goes in over a thing where that is sucking. That's sucking that way. So any debris gets caught in that and you wash that out now and again. So I'll be able to clean my carpets now with ease. I don't, I don't know if I'll have time to do that today. I probably won't have time to do that today. I should do that tomorrow on my day off. After my visit to Slimming World. Yes, we've got another way in tomorrow. So I'll keep you posted uh, on that. Uh, John Aiken says, I took a box of Yorkshire tea bags with me on holiday. Uh, like you, my day doesn't start until I've had a proper cup of tea. John, I don't go anywhere without my mobile kettle, not mobile kettle, my travel kettle and tea bags. <clears throat> I usually take some powdered milk just in case as well. I won't go anywhere without that. Absolutely. Although I haven't flown for a while now. Um, I, I, I want to try and go to Israel again next year because I, I really enjoyed Israel. There's so much interesting stuff there. And the people are nice and, and it's lovely in Tel Aviv and, and uh, Jerusalem. As long as you're with a guide, you don't really get into any sort of uh, uh, problems or anything like that. I, I really want to go to Jerusalem, uh, uh, Israel again next year. Um, but this year, funnily enough, and... Uh, oh, good morning to Richard Barron. Morning, Richard. Who says, hope you're having a good day. Great show so far. Just working on my own again. What do you do, Richard? What are you doing? What are you doing while you're working? I hope my programme isn't interrupting your day of work. I'd hate to think that anyone's lost money because of me. That's why I never give you advice on bets or anything like that. Mm. Um, I've got an email from British Airways that is telling me my... 
Sorry, I, I just heard my little bell go off there. Uh, which is telling me that my... Oh, can, just a moment, I'll have to get that. Just a second. It's, it's the bell on my phone. One minute now. I'm waiting at the moment. There we go, that's better. It's just on my mobile phone. If someone, someone rings my video doorbell, I pick it up from the phone. It's all very clever. My, my ring video doorbell type thing. Um, and I'm waiting for a delivery of a new X-Hose, which I'm not quite sure when it's coming, uh, but the old one burst. I've had it about three years, so that's not too bad, is it? Uh, so I've got a, an email from British Airways that says, um, I need to do something with my Avi, Avios, A, Avios, 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 Avios points, I think it is, um, because they otherwise they will expire. Now, I've got two months to do something with them. So, I've got to book a flight or something like that. Otherwise, I lose them. And I've got quite a lot, because a few years ago, I went to Australia, and I've got 20,300 Avios points. And uh, I'm thinking about to do what to do with these things. Well, I really want to go to the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, so I'm thinking I could, uh, and, and I don't have to go now. Yeah, I, I, I can book the flight and use the, fl use the points for maybe sometime next year if I want to. I think you can go up to 12 months ahead on flights, can't you, or something like that. Uh, although I, I was considering going to the, sort of the highlands of Scotland end of October, which would just be before the winter. Probably be a, bit, a little bit cold up there. I'd like to see Loch Lomond and uh, places like that, perhaps Loch, Loch Ness and the beautiful countryside, do a little bit of walking, something like that. So I might go and do that, actually. I was looking to hire uh, a cottage for a week, and I've come across quite a few there, uh, which generally work at anything between 30, 30 pounds a week, uh, sorry, 30 pounds a night to, you know, as, as high as you want to go, really. Uh, not sure whether to just do that, or go in a hotel, really. I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't decide what to do. Um, I, I do quite really like being left to my own devices. On the other hand, when I've been on holiday before in a travel lodge, you know, you've got your room as long as you've got a, a cup of tea. But I like to do my own cooking and all that business. I don't like to have to rely on restaurants. I'm, I'm, I'm awful going to, to restaurants. I don't like going to restaurants. Yeah, you look at this menu. Oh, I don't really want any of that. Oh, and then you might see some. Oh, well, 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 I wonder how they've cooked that. You know, and who's touched it and all that. I'm very, very funny with restaurants. I never used to be like that. I've, I've, I've become like that in the last 18 months or so. I mean, sometimes I go out with my mate. I've been out to a couple of places with him and they, then they sit there. And the other thing is, it, it, it's all so bloody elong, elongated going to a restaurant, isn't it? Now, I, I want to I wanna go into the restaurant. I want to look at the menu. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah, oh, I'll have that, please. That, that one there, please. I'll, uh. Now, my mate are going there. Oh, he had to study the bloody menu. Front, next page, next page. Da, da. And he'd go through it two or three times before he orders something, which will be something to do with chicken. Always. <laughs> it's so elongated going to a blooming restaurant. And then, of course, you've got to wait for the damn thing to be cooked. Why can't you just, why can't they just have several of these items already done, waiting to be brought out to you in an instant like that? When you cook yourself, you, the funny thing is you don't seem to notice that period of time because you're doing stuff. You're not just sitting there and you're waiting. Worst experience of that we had was the Rainforest Cafe at Euro Disney. Oh, they kept us waiting, me and my um, uh, my nephew's family. They kept us waiting an over an hour before they even came to the table. Dreadful. Dreadful there. So I think I'm, I might uh, try and hire a cottage. I don't know if I, actually, I don't know if they've got any caravan sites up there. At that time of the year, I would imagine it would be quite quiet. But I do like to do, do my own thing you know, cooking and all that business. Um, what I would probably do would be to use my Avios points or whatever they're called, uh, fly up there on the British Airways uh, to, I, I would imagine it's Inverness. That's Highlands, isn't it? I would imagine it's Inverness, to Inverness, uh, collect a car from up there, 
probably be about thirty pounds a day or something like that, and and then go off and do my thing. So I may well do that in 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 October or or further ahead. After October, you're starting to get a bit snowy up there and all that. I don't want any of that uh, of that business. I don't like the snow. Uh, Richard does electrical testing. All oh, right, okay. You haven't lost anyone any money. It's Monday. Just taking my time today. Although the room I'm in smells like last night's haddock, so won't be in here for long. Oh, how awful! Oh. Oh, the smell of fish, and it disgusting. <laughs> Why does anyone eat fish? Especially when it's gone off, don't it stink? Oh, gosh. Uh, Richard says, have you ever seen the footage of people on holiday in North Korea? You can't leave the hotel until your guide arrives. I'd still be intriguing to visit. What, do you think I should go there? North Korea? Do you think he watches my show? It might maybe King 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 Ing Jong Ping Pong uh, watches his show to learn English. You don't know. <coughs> I reckon I'd be dragged off the plane and thrown in a prison somewhere there, and made to beg for food and water. I reckon that's what would happen there, don't you? <laughs> John Aiken says the Highlands are beautiful, but we wear the midges. They bite. Oh, horrible things, midges, isn't they? We used to get them on scout camp. When I used to go camping, I mean, they were the best times of my life scouting. Oh, it was great going going to the scouts. Lots of friends there I had. Um, and uh, when we went camping, we went to some wonderful places. Uh, there was, the first place I went to was Broadstone Warren. There was Chalfont Heights, where we did the Beat Your Neighbour. That was great. Um, Buckmore Park, where we went every year. That was go-karting, swimming, roller skating. Oh, it's cold there. My God, it was cold there. We used, we did, didn't used to be in tents in Buckmore Park. They had these huts, massive dormitories, and the whole lot. Well, there must have been, I don't know, 50, 50, 60 of us in this hut. And it was a big open thing, and like bunk beds all around the outside of it. And in the middle was this dirty, great big chimney hole. You know, just supposed to let the condensation out. There was no heating in here. And we were going in February. It was so cold. <laughs> oh, dear. We all had nicknames as well. Oh, dear. That was, that was great camping. We went to the Lake District. That was great. Lake District camping. We went to the, high, we went to the Highlands of Scotland. We went there. I remember the tent. And it was set on top of a hill. The funny thing is, I don't think you notice the beauty of the surroundings so much when you're that young. You know, you all you want to do is get the, get your next meal, <laughs> which we had to cook ourselves. Um, in the Highlands, on the last day, I think on the last day we we collected all the put all the tents back down again, and slept in what I can remember was a, was some sort of barn with hay in it. And we slept in there. And then the coach came the next day and, and uh, we all went home again. Some wonderful times in the scouts. And the gang shows. We was in gang shows. Oh, yeah. Three cheers for the years and the joy of happiness found for all the fellas around. Three cheers for the times we have had together and while together we'll stay on top of the world. Oh, wonderful, wonderful times in the Scouts. Uh, 17 years ago in the year 2000, they did a reunion of people that were in the gang show. And I was so looking forward to it. And as the date got closer, it became apparent that it was the same date I was on holiday in Florida. So I never went. My mum went. She, she would have gone uh, actually not too, not too long before she died. This was in 2000. Uh, but I didn't get to go to that. And I, ever since then, I've been hoping they'd do another one. But they haven't. Uh, apparently, it was a lot of hard work trying to get all those people together. But Scouts, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Gustav says, Did, didn't know you were a huge, huge internet station in, in sensation in North Korea. Kim Il Ping Pong watches every show. It's because he hates anyone taller than him. So you're sorted. Oh, I am sure, aren't I? <laughs> I am. I am sure. <laughs> what else did I do yesterday? Oh, I finished my book. Life in a Fishbowl. Fish That's two books I've read this year. Can you believe that? Two books. Life in a Fishbowl. Now, this is about a bloke who gets a brain tumour. 
And it gives the brain tumour a name, Gillo, Gillo, I think is its name, and it tells you how it eats his memories and, you know, the bloke gets dies a little bit more each time. A TV crew want to come in, or, or do go in, offer the family $5 million to film every last moment, and that happens, but the family get fed up with it, and uh, it, it's a really good, a good book, really good book. And the brain tumour becomes the person, you see, because it keeps eating and eating all these... It sees a memory, oh, I like that one, and it eats it. All the memories, the good ones and the bad ones. And then right near the end, it says <coughs> that the brain tumour now felt he was actually the man himself. So he's now going to reach out into his ears and his eyes to make contact with the outside world. And the brain tumour reaches out but it can't see or hear anything, and it doesn't know why. And then it looks for more memories, because it's hungry, and it can't find any. And it retreats back, and, well, what's gone wrong here? And then it suddenly dawned on it that he'd eaten all the memories, and there was nothing left. And this brain tumour then realised it also had to die. It's, it's a very, very good book. Very, very good book. Um, it's not an adult book, actually. I think it's a, a young person's book. But if you want to get that one, Life in a Fishbowl. So there we are. And uh, I've now got the added excitement excitement of going down to Waterstones and selecting another book. It does take me a long time to read a book, unless I'm on the train. Sometimes I have to go up to London on, uh, to the um, uh, Royal Free Hospital for to do a couple of bits and pieces up there. Uh, so I'll take the book with me. It's nice going on the train. You know, sit there relaxing with a book and, and doing nothing else, don't you? So I read that book yesterday. Um, let me have a look at the... Uh, da, 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 what else? Oh, I've ordered. Anyone got one of these? A halogen oven. Has anyone got a halogen oven? I saw this. I was tempted, boys and girls. Someone put on Slim as well. This is what you want. You can do chips in a halogen oven with next to or... No, um, no oil at all. So I've ordered a halogen air oven because <laughs> it was on special offer. Thirty pounds instead of ninety nine. Bargain. Is that could that possibly be another gadget for the kitchen, which will go along with the food processor and the uh, the bread making machine and sit on top of a shelf? I think. <laughs> How many of those have you got in your house? Gadgets that you've purchased and you don't even use. Am I right? Uh, I bet you have. There's a phone line open if you want to call in at some point, boys and girls. Uh, there it is. It's 020 3477 okay? 020 3477 if you want to call in at some point. Phone lines aren't open for like, most, most of the time. People don't call in. They're quite happy to sit there and listen, which is fine by me as well. But if you want to, there it is. The phone number's up there now, 020 3477 uh, There's also a Skype. If you've got Skype, you can Skype into the show. My Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. The Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. So looking forward to my £30 uh, halogen oven. Television I watched last night, Poldark. It's finished. The last episode of Poldark last night. But good news, it's coming back. Not till next year. A whole year to wait till Poldark comes back on the screen. I love it. Has anyone been watching that, Poldark? That evil person, George, who is Ross's cousin, he was destroyed last night by his wife, Elizabeth, and ended up in tears. I was cheering in front of the telly when I came back in from the uh, karaoke last night, which was very, very exciting last night, the karaoke. Oh, things happened there last night. I might save that for tomorrow, actually. I might actually save that for tomorrow night's show. Should have a show for you uh, late night tomorrow, OK? Around about 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, but there were incidents last night at the karaoke. Not just inside, but outside as well. <laughs> and I looked up on the computer. Guess what? Full moon. Full moon last night it was. Yes. I'll make a note of that. Karaoke three incidents. Let me just put a little circle around there. I'll save that for tomorrow's show in case nothing happens tonight for uh, that's of interest to talk about. All right. <laughs> Let's do some news stories, boys and girls. Now, look at this. 
Is your account safe? Not according to the Daily Mail this morning. Computer hackers carried out at least one cyber attack against banks and other lenders every week last year. So it's not just you. It's not just just you who gets that email. Oh, hello, it's the Metro Bank here. Uh, we seem to you, you notice we, you've been having trouble entering your account. If you just type in your password, click here, type in your password, and oh, that's not an, a letter from the bank. It's a scam. And I must get 10 of these a week. It's very, I mean, I, I can spot them a mile off. You can't scam me. I don't honestly think you can scam me. And even if I do think, oh, I wonder if that is the best. I ring them up and I ring them on the number that I know is their number, not the number that might be emailed to you in an email. But it's the uh, uh, organisations that get attacked as well. The massive surge of fraud came as the country's biggest banks were accused of covering up the threat to customers in an attempt to protect their reputations. Have you got a reputation, Gustav? Yeah, so not very good, is it, really? Uh, cybercrime is seen by many senior bankers as the biggest single, single biggest danger faced by their industry. Attacks on lenders cost consumers an, extra, an estimated £8 billion pounds last year. £8 billion. You can't imagine that number, can you? £8 billion. Have you ever been scammed? Have you ever been scammed? Have you been actually got, if you see what I mean? I mean I'm sure most of you like that, get the emails from the back. Oh, no, click off. You know that they're trying to scam you. But have you actually been scammed? Did you actually get tripped up by any of these things? Put a message on there or call me and tell me about it. 020 3477 I did get scammed once, actually. It was about 12 years ago. And I had a website. <clears throat> and I was doing a radio show. And this bloke sent us an email. I was like, oh, I've seen your website. Um, and it was very um, complimentary, this email. So, you know, you're, you're a great DJ and all this old crap. But your website leaves a lot to be desired. Someone of your stature, this is that other email, honestly, this is that email, uh, needs a better website. I can do this for you, £75. And um, I never actually spoke to the person on the phone or anything like that. So emails going backwards and forth. Yeah, OK, I'll do that. He said, right, you need to give me your password and all that to the old website. And I thought, well, what harm can that do? That's not like money, is it? You know, just a website. So I gave him all that. He said, well, I'll do, do it for you. So he did it all for He said, but it will be £75. How do I, oh, PayPal. So I sent him £75 and then he set up this page and he said, well, how do, what, what do you think? I said, yeah, it's OK. And then I realised half the stuff didn't work. <clears throat> Couldn't get hold of him after that. No, disappeared with my £75. So yes, I did get scammed once. Have you ever been scammed? Ever been tripped up? Maybe had your credit cards cloned. My friend Mary, non-Irish Mary, who you know from the uh, karaoke, she often comes and sings at the karaoke. She was there last night, actually. Um, uh, she had her cards, uh, what's the word, skimmed. Is it skimmed? She had her cards skimmed when she was in Brazil last week, so she had to cancel all her cards and all that business, you know. So apparently the bank rang her at four o'clock in the morning and say, have you bought this? Have you bought that? And of course she hadn't. They know straight away. The banks are very good at picking that sort of thing up. I would want the bank to ring me at four o'clock in the morning and tell me that have I been using my credit card to buy £500 worth of cigarettes in, in Malaysia or wherever? And of course I don't. You know, I don't smoke, do I? <laughs> so it is worrying. Keep an eye on those banks. Whenever you get an email from someone like that, then then, you know... Delete it straight away. Now, we've got uh, in this morning's uh, sun, people complaining again. Now, these people that are complaining about the aircraft are probably the same people that go to places like Alton Towers, uh, uh, Blackpool, where that ghastly um, thing is. Oh, what's it now? You, uh, roller coaster. Now, I'm not a roller coaster fan. Can you tell? Why would anyone want to go on something where you can die? And people do. Look at that business. Was it Alton Towers last year where that poor girl lost her legs? And they were all hanging from underneath there. 
that people pay a small fortune to go on things where they're going to possibly die. So it, it, it always bemuses me when I see stories like this. Shocking footage shows a plane cabin wrecked by severe turbulence, which injured 10 passengers and sent drinks flying through the air. The American Airlines flight, or oh, American Airlines, I went on them once, never again, never again. I have never sat on such an uncomfortable seat. It was like sitting on a piece of wood. <laughs> All the foam had flattened where probably fat people had sat on it. You don't know if it was sitting in one next to fat on a plane, do you? Oh, it's right out here, love. Can you move your fat out of the way? I'm trying to get my elbow on there. Thank you. <laughs> the American Airlines flight <coughs> from Athens to Philadelphia was rocked by the terrifying incident on Saturday, <coughs> which witnesses claimed dislocated the shoulder of a crew member. Oh, well, you've got to do that thing, haven't you? Right, are you ready? Are you ready? Click! Ah! Oh! And it's done. How clever is that? I love watching that on Casualty. Oh, don't don't laugh. My little um, great-niece, that happened to her, her shoulder became dislocated, didn't it? Little Emily, bless her heart. She had to go to the hospital. They gave her these... Um, pain relief drugs while she was waiting. Uh, I think she's she's three years old. And she was... <laughs> my, my niece, her mother, she did a video of, of her drugged. Yeah. How are you? I'm all right, Mum. I'm all right, Mum. <laughs> we love children, don't we? Anyway, back to the story. The astonishing chip sh uh, ch clip shows the ceiling of the aircraft splattered with hot drinks and booze. As, well, that was... <laughs> That was before the turbulence. In the back, have you been in the back of a plane in economy? Oh my God, the mess there! Crisp packets all over the floor, drinks all over the place. Oh, and there's oh the smell. <gasps> oh God! Now this is where this will come in useful. I might take this on a plane in future. Any time I have to enter the economy area, I'll just put that on, like that. <laughs> What do you reckon? Would that stop the smell of economy? Oh, it's awful. <laughs> the turbulence struck when the cabin crew were serving drinks, causing the refreshments to hurtle through the air and staff members to reportedly crash against the ceiling. I thought it was just a cabaret show they were doing. But all these people are moaning now. The same sort of people that will spend an arm and a leg going to blooming Alton Towers and being thrown away or thrown around on one of those um, uh, one of those roller coasters, which is never for me. And they've got them at Disney as well, roller coasters at Disney. Um, but quite frankly, they're, they're, I, I don't go on them. Not happy with roller coasters. My favourite... Um, uh, ride at Disney is It's a Small World. You know that one. La -da 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 -da. I love it. All righty. Uh, we're going to wrap up now, boys and girls. Uh, let's do today's birthdays. And uh, don't forget, tonight it's karaoke tonight. Karaoke. It's Monday night karaoke at Central Station in Wharfdale Road in King's Cross. Join us there from 8 o'clock with cheap drinks as well. 8 to 11.30. Every Monday night is karaoke and cheap drinks at Central Station. All right, uh, come along and sing a song or two there. Uh, today's birthdays, I'll do yesterday's as well, actually, because uh, we weren't here yesterday. Ah, Wayne Martin, who is also a karaoke host. 43 years old. He had a speaker fall on his head yesterday or, or last week sometime, didn't you? Dear me. A speaker fell on his head. Do be careful of those little old speakers, dear. Wayney is 43 today. Happy birthday, Wayney Martin. He's always he's on the also on the Slimmers world as well and doing very, very well on that. Happy birthday, Wayney. Uh, David Harris. Happy birthday, David. Let's have a look at you there with your little dog. All right, David. Happy birthday. Uh, Dana Houston, one of our Manilo ladies. Happy birthday, Dana. Have you been seeing his shows in America recently? Hope you have, my darling. Sapphire Leo is 26 years old today. <clears throat> Andrew Wiley is 28 years old today. Stephen Robert McMillan is 50 years old today. Kyle. Hello, Kyle. 
Hope you're well, Carl. Is uh, 31. Carl Luke, 31 years old today. Colin Ward's birthday today. Happy birthday, Colin. Uh, and Gary Brock's ver birthday uh, today as well. Happy birthday to you, Gary. If you ever want anyone's birthday um, done that I don't have on the Facebook, then just send it over, OK? Maybe a couple of days before and I'll uh, read those out for you and any messages that you might have as well. Yes, it is birthdays. Uh, Angela Warren, another one of our my great Barry Manilow friends. Happy birthday, Angela. You're such a lovely little lady. You really are. Happy birthday, Angela. Uh, Rebecca Bruce, happy birthday. 42 yesterday. Alex Akis uh, Nicolau. I hope I've said that all right. Happy birthday to you. And Dave Holt from Radio Fame. Fame. Radio Fame. Fam. Radio Fame. It's his birthday yesterday as well. So let's sing the song, boys and girls. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday, gang. And that's it for the show today. Thank you very much. I'll uh, probably be with you tomorrow night, I reckon. Tomorrow night, uh, around about uh, 10, 11 o'clock. So that's Tuesday night, late show, OK? Tomorrow night, around about 10 or 11 o'clock. Have a nice Monday, and thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.